All right, everybody, we're back live on Skywatchers Radio right here on the Dark Matter Radio Network and, of course, PSN Radio. Folks that I'm talking about, the guests of the evening, it's like I, yeah. it, it feels like I've never talked to you in the, or haven't talked to you in a long, long time, but yeah. not really. Bill and Nancy Burns, how the heck are you? Welcome to Skywatchers Radio. Nancy's been here before. Bill, this, I think this is your first time yeah. Yeah. on my sure show, is. right? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And, and how shame like on it? me. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to all of you anyway. Oh, thank you. Okay, so it, during the break, uh, we were talking to Se- uh, to Alan, and right. Alan is a person who has been working 120-hour weeks. Okay, that's yes. a lot of work. Now, you are talking to four, now three other workaholics, okay? Right. And probably 90% of the audience listening, but... Uh, I'm a workaholic. Lord knows Angel is. He's working like 25 jobs. Yes. Um, Bill we all, is We are writing... struggle in this realm. Yeah, all exactly. This. So uh, I wanted to let the audience know that um, I wanted to quickly ask you a question before we lost you because there was talk during the break that you might want to take a break and go to sleep because you are, in fact, walking a walking zombie. On your mind, you, he, he, mind you, he's been drinking moonshine for the last five hours. Nah, go I ahead, can, you can no, tell I, the difference. No, I haven't. No, no I haven't. you can tell the difference. Not this um, time, no. Well, you know. Nancy, what do you want to ask Alan over here? Yeah, go well, ahead and ask. Well, <clears throat> I wanted to, since Alan is the second in command here um, on the show, and right. since Alan has to sometimes. Well, te- no, hold on. Technically, 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 he's the third in command. See, our overlord, Keith Rowland. It's the yes, first in yeah, command. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody. Okay, I would. I would Keith be second, fig- and then okay, he'll I'm be third. Getting, nah, Keith is a figment. I'm beginning yeah. to think Keith doesn't no. exist. See, no, he see, does. See, like, he does right, exist. Right now, Keith is holding up cue cards, saying, "I exist." You can't <laughs> see it. He doesn't talk. He just holds up cue cards. Right in your in your in your mind. <clears throat> <laughs> so I want to ask Nancy. There's a lot going on in that mind of his. You don't want to well, start with that. <laughs> I wanted to yeah. So I wanted to ask you, Alan. Have sure. you gotten a consistent stream of hate mail since you started you know, the radio? You know, I don't know because Angel doesn't let me read the email. So I don't know if I've gotten consistent hate mail. Have I gotten consistent hate mail, Angel? Well, let's just say I didn't want to bruise your uh, fragile ego. Yeah. Really? No, <laughs> actually, no. Come we, on, come on. I've known. Here's the thing: we don't really give our emails out a lot. We give uh, the, the Facebook page out. Everybody knows the Skywatchers uh, Radio dot com page. And maybe I'm a little how to too. Find maybe us, my but... my borders are a little too impervious or pervy per per. Uh, what per, was all they have that's to that's do? Permeable. Is permeable. Permeable. There you go. Permeable, yeah. that's it. Or permeable. porous. My porous are porous. Things leak right in and out. It's terrible. It could or be pervious. that. You could say pervious, too. Well, but I got three today. Say, and, and, and I answered one of them saying, you know, I'm sorry. I'm so, I don't mean to be offensive, something like that. And then I answered the other one with something like, um, <laughs> I mean, I got, I got really schlong today three different ways. And it's like in one case, I told this one guy, you know, if I quit, then you'll be happy. But so far, you know, you're going to have to be unhappy. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me ask you the question, though. You got three pieces of hate mail, but were they all because of the same trigger point or yeah. different triggers? Yeah, the same. Okay. I got to ask, what did you What's do? What's the trigger point? What is yeah, what was the trigger? Interrupt what men's, did... the men folk. Oh, well, she's the great you know, interrupter. That's, that's what it is, Nancy, yeah. really. You know that that you know honestly, they shouldn't be knocking you. They really shouldn't because you know when someone has something really important to say, you could stop a midstream conversation and you know stream a thought because you know you just gotta throw it out there. The same times when we have people that are on here that are telling us stuff, and we're at the point where it's like, I'm sorry, I gotta call Bat Squatch. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. Well, see, that, that's the thing. We have um, – sometimes I like to let a person dig a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. I have yeah. a bunch of different ways. I women do a, that, by the way. Why do women yeah. do that? Well, see, that's the thing. I think there's a couple that things. That is so wrong right. of you women. Okay, and for anybody <laughs> listening who agrees with these kinds of um, people who are good enough to write at least and go in the, and they go into the discus on, on futuretheater.com and they put this stuff. <clears throat> but um, – for folks who want to hear just Bill, there's a little series um, 
about a year ago, thereabouts, a year and a half ago, where Bill did the show all by himself for three months. So dive yeah. in. Enjoy. By the way, what part of the country are you guys in? Oh, that's where, right where you are. And that was the other thing. When you first came on this morning, right. I thought perhaps you sounded like you had a cold. Um, my my daughter and her husband lived right in Jersey City, right next to where you are. Oh, it's okay. It's very urbanized now. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I used to live in... I used to live in New York about 20 years ago. I lived I lived in the city and in Queens. Whereabouts? Um, I lived in uh, Midtown, and I lived in uh, Kew Garden Hills and Rigo Park when I was wow. younger. Wow. And so what, did you go uh, to Paul Bowen High School? No, 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 no. I got kicked out of my high school. That's a whole other story. Wow. Okay. Um, really? Yeah. He was a yeah. rebel without a clue. No, but okay, so you yeah. have to tell us why. How how do you get kicked out of high school? Yeah, I'm in, intrigued. Of course, we're, in we're here to Hills, too. I mean, I can't we're, believe it. We're here to yeah. interview Bill and Nancy, but I want to hear this story. So yeah, yeah that's actually, right. yeah, yeah. No, and it's I should tell the same. story. And I should tell the story. I'm from the other side of the lake in Forest Hills. So yeah, I I sort of got caught sleeping with the rabbi's daughter. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was knowing wow. you, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How old was this girl? She the the right age for me at the time. Okay. Was okay. it true love? Good answer. Um, you know, yeah, but you know the joke falling out of love is just as easy as falling in love. Yeah. You know, I that's, I, that's romantic though. And you got Okay, so what It's a good thing rabbis don't love? excommunicate their flock. Um, you but know, But Alan, did you complete high school? Um, yeah, kind of sort of, yeah. Wow. Um, I I scored. I got kicked out. Um, you know, that wasn't the real trigger, as we're saying. When I got caught, uh, he pretty much called me out in the middle of class as a gigolo. At oh. which point, at which point, I turned around and said to him, "But Rabbi, I didn't charge." And that's what that's really got kicked me kicked out. Well, are you, how, how tall, <laughs> tall or short are you? Uh, depending on how well I slept, uh, <laughs> about five six, five seven. Okay, so you're a short guy. He's I'm a short, alti- yeah. I'll admit I'm altitudinally challenged. But you're true. probably really cute, right? Um, <laughs> um I've uh, I've had a f- I, I like the way Angel says I have a face for radio. Um But no, I have uh, yeah, I have a feeling you have hair. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> actually, hair. actually I'm gonna mute myself for a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. <laughs> He's he must be laughing his brains out right now. Um, actually, I do. This is all bald now. radio. On yeah, Dark this is all, radio all bald radio. <laughs> oh wow! Um, no, no, no. When when I was younger, yeah, I had a nice thick head of hair, and you know, I I was a, um, you know, I had my my share of you know, wet, you know, girls and women in my life, and. Uh, you, you know, did it your way. I, I, you know, I didn't get in, well. I got into a lot of trouble because, you know, it's like I, I was the cool Jew. Um, so, you know, I, I I grew up in a Orthodox community or modern Orthodox community, but because of my upbringing, I also blended into the secular world as well as the the religious world. So and it's I, like staying alive for Jewish boys. <laughs> yeah, I am not. He was the John Travolta of his neighborhood. Yeah, he yeah. was. That's a good, but that was a great movie, by the way, guys. You know, unfortunately, that that sounds a little bit accurate, except for wearing the white spandex. No, anything but that. No, not those white that white leisure suit. Well, did you Larry. ever uh, read or hear about the novel Portnoy's Complaint when you were growing up? No, actually, I you're too, way too have, young. No. Way too young. No. Wait, you should really look into if you're um, if you ever have Netflix. Do you ever do Netflix? Sure, of course. Yeah. Type of old movies, you, and nowadays um, I'm learning about a whole new thing that might. Um, I've never done torrents, and I know they're. I oh. guess are they hundred percent illegal? Oh, Nancy. Huh? N- Nancy, it's illegal, but they're awesome. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not illegal. It depends on what it is. Uh, cert- well, yeah, if you're doing like don't. movies and the stuff torrent like that, technology yeah. is not illegal. Not illegal, okay. That's true. Yeah. Some of the movies that are posted on torrents are illegal, but if you go to, let's say, for example, EZTV dot it, you could get every TV show that has aired for the past 
10 plus years, you are able to download because you missed the episode, which is 100% legal because it was aired on public TV. So, ECTV dot what? IT. I I mean, I, I... I just finished watching Defiance. Uh, well, I don't know if you're following that or not. I don't know if well, you watch. Well, does it take a, you know? And I, that's it's kind of like I'm taking baby steps, but but it, because we had to, um, we we've had to try to extricate ourselves um, from Comcast. Oh, just uh-huh. a little bit, not a lot, because they are still uh-huh. our our provider for internet. But but do you guys, either of you, know if there are other providers for internet, or does Comcast just blanket no, the there, area? There, well, there are other co- providers, but uh, most of them are not as good, uh, unfortunately, when it comes to well, speed. Nancy, what part of the country are you in? Where are you guys? Uh, well, we're spent a lot of money, Nancy. We're, yeah, we're a in lot. a special spot, and Bill can tell you we can't get Verizon service, for example, where we are. Okay. Wow, really? Because Verizon like covers most of the country. I know it does, it does but the but the, <clears throat> the the place where from where that main switchboard from where all these lines uh, um, uh, diverge, yeah. that switchboard is too far away for the signal to reach oh, us. Oh, oh, oh! Your demarcation point. Is, your demarcation point is beyond two miles. Uh, right, and you have signal degradation. Yeah, I I, I understand. Um, you know. You might have to go with your local telephone network for what's their version of tripled up DSL. Right. If if that's the only other option that you have. Right. Uh, so anyway, so I I simply wow. um, yeah yeah. So All okay, so our, our, talk our on chat our Dark chat Matter is Radio rebelling, network. so we should we, we should <laughs> change t- our topic. By the way, yeah, all your, all your all your episodes by the way are available on Easy TV. Okay. Oh, good. You know, and and people download it. That's the beautiful part about it. Yeah, yeah. And, and so um, I'm just starting to learn how insidious it is when um, there are monopolies, as it, as in Comcast. And so um, I'm I'm I I had to research this thing called VPN, Virtual Private Network. Been, right. Okay. Do you know? Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have actually. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's where I am, and I have a feeling once I perfect that, there's a whole world opens up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not, wait wait till you start be... learning about the Tor network. Yes, that's what I'm looking at. That's and the what thing we is... call the undernet. It is the underbelly of the um, – it's the yeah. underbelly of the internet. But I have read that it's like 10 or 100 times bigger than the, what we call the internet. Yes, By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, agree with Skinny Bob over here. This is uh, this is boring. Is yeah, Skinny Bob. Sorry. And this is this is a question in chat room here that I actually just want to jump into because it's actually a good question by Skinny Bob. Uh, but oh, he right. wants to know. Uh, he wants to ask Bill uh, if you have any comments or opinions on the Jonathan Reed case. Because after all, we are Skywatchers yeah, Radio, yeah, and we are a UFO based show. So why don't we hop into that and segue out of technical Comcast? Well, didn't Reed? Uh, didn't Reed admit that it was a hoax? I mean, didn't. Wasn't that one of the things no, that he finally... No, he, he's still... In fact, he was on some radio show recently, and he's still talking about really? it. Like it's a, yeah, like it's a real thing. Yeah. Well, well now, um, here, here's the thing I want to ask all three of you guys. I'll, I'll ask the question, and you three can answer. What keeps you in this field as more and more of these hoaxes just pile up? Well, Nancy, let me start off with asking you a question and yeah. rebuttal to mm-hmm. before I answer that question. Yeah. Uh, you had a gentleman on yesterday on Future Theater by the name of uh, James Gilliland. Gilliland? Gilliland? How do you pronounce that last Gilliland. name? Gilliland. Gilliland. That, that yeah. guy. Uh, fine gentleman, very nice guy. I uh, enjoyed his conversation uh, immensely, but uh, kind of a weird story. The Gilligan Gilliland Ranch. Uh, you know, tell folks a little bit uh, about like what happened. Well, let me tell you why show. I think he's a valuable guest and a valuable guest or a member of the UFO community until such time as he is officially uh, debunked. And I believe that Rich Giordano might have been a potential debunker because he he uh, skyped me this morning and said, "I really, really uh, think I've exposed this guy." But that's beside the point i right. i'd have to see what rich has but there's something weird going on in which er, people from all around the world go to his space wherever it is his ranch his, his retreat and they seem to see weird stuff and feel very transformed and rich said if you get a hold of a satellite 
um, you know, you can get a satellite schedule, and you can basically exactly. host. Remember, host actually, your way. We, we were talking about that on uh, chat yesterday when you guys were on the air, and I mentioned that uh, that's mm, probably what's going on. Uh, you know, I use different language, but I don't want to use right. that on air. Uh, but yeah. I, you know, that's what a lot of these folks do. And look, the reason I brought him up is because you know we got into conversation of uh, other folks in ufology, and uh, I find it funny, Nancy. You know, going into your question, uh, I find it funny how a lot of the folks in ufology are very uh, volatile and yes. are and are usually at war with each other. Like, you know, we have uh, James over here who's at war with, uh, let's see, uh, Stephen Greer. He's at war with uh, Mike, uh, Michael Horn and, of course, uh, or, the, or Michael the Martian. Uh, you have no one. idea. We've been in uh, another 10 years on top of your 10 years. Yeah. I think. Well, I, don't, I, don't have hit, I, don't, I haven't hit 10 years yet. Not on this okay. Okay. It's okay. really yes. easy yeah. to rattle someone's cage in this community. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and and also it everything depends on how you come into the community. I predict if you come in trying to keep, you know, like you've got your hat in your hand and you're being very polite and you try really, I think there's ways not to offend people. And you can come in and maybe have an easier time of it. But right now there are people who are very anti-Richard Dolan, for example. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. has an easy time of it. Uh, Angel has had his share of people yelling at him. Oh, of um, course. Alan, and that's why I was wondering, Alan, you seem a little bit immune to it, and um, yet you're still well, see, interested Al in the topic. Alan, does, Alan doesn't really get into it as deep as I, I've gotten into it, because he's really just uh, started off his broadcasting career on this show. He, yeah, he hasn't I've been, been doing this for a while. I've been in the yeah. community and for a, trekking, of a while. But well, see, now, Bill, Bill has it the worst. Bill has it so bad, um, A, and then he has sort of hero worship so bad that it's not good, too, so... That he does. That yeah. he does. But that goes with the territory of the stuff that Bill's covered over the years. I mean, uh, look at the, the broad spectrum of things that uh, the Bill's written about. And, of course, we're talking about Bill like he's not even in the room or even... Right, well, I'm just sitting here. Don't room. mind Yeah, me. he's just sitting there. <laughs> you know, like, he's not even listening to us. Uh, but, no, you know, Bill, look, you started off uh, writing stuff on John F. Kennedy. And then you've migrated over to ufology. And I'm sure you've carried over some hate from one to the other. Or have carried over fans from one to the other. Hmm. I mean, well, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, twenty years, thirty years ago, actually, um, we were writing about computers. Those were our first books, right? Right, and then, um, then gradually, we slid into true crime, and then it was actually from true crime, from trying to uh, pitch uh, a story by this FBI agent to a motion picture company, that's really how I got involved with um, this particular topic when I met Philip Corso. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what, I mean, was it an instant uh, attraction to uh, the whole UFO community, or was it something that you gradually were getting into, or were, were you always kind of a fan of, uh, of the whole UFO topic? Well, no, I mean, I was a fan because I, I, I'd actually followed stuff, but in terms of being an active research member of a community no i i wasn't but but i was following stuff in the 1950s and because in the 1950s the stories about roswell were very prevalent and very current and, and 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 there was a lot of talk about roswell and and obviously that was fueled by what we now know was the reason for it, but it was fueled by all the science fiction movies of the 1950s. Well, don't right. you think that people our age are kind of primed to keep thinking there will be revelation because we kind of were brought up that way? Right. That, that was each, our... Yeah. I agree. That was our... That was the message that was given to us, that in some, except in Invaders from Mars. But, but in terms of what the message was is that all will be revealed. And so... That's that's what well, we're what all do you expecting. think about the really big hoaxes? Like you didn't hear. I know you didn't have your earphones in before. Before we came on, Angel was talking about this guy who's saying uh, he's seventeen come back. years. <laughs> the, no, the, <laughs> yeah, the retired the, marine who spent yeah. seventeen years on Mars training the new colonies on Mars. Five colonies, by the way, not one. Right. Five colonies. How to fight off Martians. But why the pseudonym? Why not just be, you know, because... Captain K. And, uh, and how is he... <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting Captain Caveman at this point. Um, Oonga Boonga. Well, no, how yeah. do you spell Captain K? K-A-Y-E. Um, K -E. Captain K. 
Hmm. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. So, so I'm wondering, you know, um, do you remember at all the the Serpo incident? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I remember. Well, I that know. was that was an interesting thing in that, uh, you know, it's one of our. I think it's one of the few issues we're completely sold out of now, but or, or almost. I'm not sure. But, yeah, we're um, totally sold out. There are no more Serpo issues. Okay, but not on this coast. On the west coast, there are a ton. Okay, really? well, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, let's talk about Skinny Bob again here. Let's go and see. Is he, he was actually pretty prickly about the fact we were boring. So now he's got another one. Okay, so here. Yeah, yeah, he does, does Bill have and, any uh, comments on Charles Hall and the Tall Whites? Charles Hall. Okay, are we talking now about that movie called Invisible Hand? Is this in, from Invisible Hand? I have no idea, but he wants to know. Uh, he, he wants to know, or does he want to call out any current disinformation agents? Like yeah. Bill would know that. Uh, Bill, when did you become the debunker and I am not. I am, I am. I am. I am not the debunker. <laughs> yeah. I am not the debunker in chief. In fact, I really don't follow the field that much. I mean, I, I'm I'm speaking at the Mufon convention. No way. Next Mr. Month. UFO hunter himself. Well, no, but next month, <laughs> next month, I'll be talking about why the major media doesn't cover UFO stories or any of the evidence that people uncover, why these are kind of laughed at and dismissed. And so I'll be talking there with George Knapp um, at, the, at the MUFON conference about And this. listen, don't forget that when we were listening over the weekend to this kind of um, conference on uh, new energy stuff, there's a guy there whose profession is, he seems to be saying he talks about that very topic, why culture is hiding this. Do you remember no, that mean, guy? I mean, there is a justifiable reason why the powers that be are hiding this. The political and religious ramifications for a good portion of this globe would be in such upheaval with the true realization that we are not just alone in the universe. I wonder. But we are not as evolved and not as... Uh, I wonder. I wonder See, if on, it's uh, just going to seep in. You know, here, here's, here's, the thing, here's the thing, guys. And, uh, Nancy, I'm going to go back to that earlier question that you asked. And why, you know, what keeps us involved in ufology, in this field uh, that is called ufology? Um, right now, it's really just uh, curiosity, curiosity to see how many people are lying and how many huh. people are hoaxing. Oh, that's and good. To see, and to see if there is any truth to the, to the whole matter. Uh, because it's funny, doing this more and more and doing the radio shows, listening to people's stories and uh, interacting with, cer with certain individuals and certain people, going back and forth in emails with certain Martian... Right, uh, exactly. We shouldn't be uh, discussing much. Uh, but, you know, doing the stuff that I've uh, been covering for the last four or five years, it's, uh, it's amazing how much uh, the level of hoaxing has been going on uh, for a very, very, very long time. Well, so yeah, it makes me, yeah, it makes me wonder, hold on, it makes me wonder, uh, it makes me wonder if that is why, going back to what Bill said, if that is why the mainstream kind of looks at it as a joke and doesn't well, let take Bill, it seriously. Yeah, let Bill tell the story about how a hoax basically crashed his UFO hunter career, period. Oh, and that's why go. it's very significant. It's It's mm -hmm. not something that happened... It, it, in other words, let Bill, let Bill now can well, put I more just, pieces together. Well, right, because I was told why it happened. Yeah. But, but by somebody who shall be nameless. Yeah. But, um, one of the things that happened was after the first show of season two were, or was the show about the um, these flying triangles, these triangular formations of lights in the sky, not in Phoenix, but in Illinois in a suburb of Chicago. Tinley Park was the suburb. Oh, I'm, I, I know that situation. I remember right. that, yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, one of the things we did um, to, as part of the show was to see if the residents who'd filmed and who'd witnessed the triangular formations of lights could identify um, balloons, candles suspended from balloons in a rough formation. And, and that was how we ended that show. And after that show, a lot of people began to email us about, oh, you know, we could have hoaxed it because uh, this is what you didn't do. This is what you should have done. Oh, those guys didn't see flying lights at all. Those guys were seeing the constellation Cassiopeia, which was moving across the sky that night at ex exactly the times when these guys were seeing lights. Okay, all that is meaningful. 
what happened in toward the beginning of the next season, probably in January. It, in fact, it was in January mm-hmm. that uh, these two guys set off um, Chinese lanterns over North Jersey, over a local Morristown airport in New Jersey, and that created a mini UFO flag. So the network decided, the network suggested, why don't, I know that I'm not shipping out to California the, the fo- until the following day, so could I take Saturday morning, early Saturday morning, go up to Morristown with them and <clears throat> do like a mini, mini episode with the idea being, let's try to plug that into the first episode on Flying Triangles. Because here's right, a current right, case. Now, that's yeah, older it was case. timeliness, right? Right, it was timeliness. So I did that. And in the episode, we knew, because we'd been told by the police, they had determined that these were Chinese lanterns. And they were right. prosecuting the people that were filing charges against the two guys who set them off. Now, so we knew that. So the conceit of that setup was we were going to, at least it was my idea, we were going to plug the scientific analysis of the DVD that we got from this uh, retired pilot up there who took a video of these things. We were going to uh, have Terence Masson analyze that alongside with other footage from Mark Olson up in Sonora, California. Hmm. And the point was, yes, these are indeed flares. That was the point of that first episode. No, in- okay. Instead, instead, what happened was there was a whole bunch of, they were using different cameras, the settings were all wrong. Okay. So, so we didn't... This is when you were filming like this pre- pre-season right, when I went, right. thing. Right. So, so we couldn't cut it. It was in. like a pickup reel or something. Right. So instead, the network did another episode that I suggested, which became the television show Ancient Aliens. But so that particular episode, as Nancy said, that became kind of a setup for the season. And it was never an episode. After these guys did their prank, they went to the Newark Star Ledger. And they said, at, at first... They claimed that the sighting that, that, that the news had um, talked about, that they were the ones that did it and that they should be interviewed. But they gave false names to MUFON. MUFON ran the IP addresses and realized these guys were hoaxing. We also knew that when we were filming this. So we knew this thing was a hoax. Well, but it never, that episode never came to be. When these guys released their video, they went to the Newark Star Ledger. There was a big flap. The network got very concerned. And so it was a hoax of a hoax. Nobody was hoaxed by this thing. This was but supposed to go into an episode. Who do you think encouraged these kids to do this? Well, uh, well they weren't kids. They were, uh, they were adults. And because I spoke to them and... The story that I got from a person who crossed our path, who knew all about this and who crossed our path um, on Long Island, uh, said that the standard way to do things like this is that you chat up guys that are cut out. So he's not a person from an intelligence agency, but he is a cooperating individual with that intelligence agency. Somebody, You're talking about the people who did the balloons. Yeah, somebody got to them and said, listen, why don't you guys do this? You guys should just do this. This would be great. And then later Yeah, they were used like plan. patsies almost. And they, and they no, but it's also an easy way to make money and to kind of work for your government. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know? Well, anyway, that was his explanation. It would seem to me. What had happened. Do you, I mean, do you think they, this was uh, – I mean, do you think you were set up in a way? Yeah. Well, of course. That this was, was the whole point of this Because thing. the whole thing was, after that happened, it was like poisoning the water. The show right. was just due to come on its third season. And there became a swell. And this is, I'm, I guess this is what I'm still reacting to when I get bad email. There was just such a swell of hatred that was so far out of proportion. Which was to, weird, because let me tell you, Bill, for a long time, I mean, everybody that, that I knew who was into the subject, who knew you, who you were, I mean, 
completely thought you were legit and loved, you know, watching you on TV and loved the show. And, I mean, we talked about it on radio a lot with uh, <clears throat> the ex a host that should not be mentioned. Right, but see, the thing yeah. is, you're all real. I mean, you're a real investigator in a real, in a real setting and so forth like God that. God bless I, you, I think, I think we're, that. <laughs> Well, we're talking about trolls. I think we're talking about people who make a living helping shape the narrative, if I can put it that way. And, of course, right. our, our Martian friend is, 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 is a troll of the first degree, I'm sure. He is just a... a OCD. I would assume. Weirdo. I don't know. Yeah, there's so much uh, weird. There's so much weirdness going on with that guy. But uh, it's it's funny that they would target you, though, Bill. I mean, uh, that's odd, oh. especially when uh, when the subject. It's not like they've completely removed this kind of show from TV. No, yes, your four hundreds got removed, but okay, Ancient yep, Aliens are still on. Here's, uh, the oh, is still, still being here's what's been though. removed. Bill can tell you, but th- that show did, uh, even though it was. Um, stupid sometimes the investigation oftentimes you know they didn't listen to anybody after a while they started out being very friendly and 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 listening to people in the field experts in the field so to speak eventually they got, kind of went their own way and figured they knew where they knew everything and so it was a rocky road this thing called research but it was so real and i have already been through it with the eckers and the magazine it's sort right. of the same way just like now you're a new we're all new on a new network and so eventually as we get bigger more and more people will try to you know just make you feel bad i think um like go away because some of us are sniffing around the truth i think i really think that that's that's really been my whole goal is uh sniffing around the truth that's exactly, exactly. what it is just trying exactly. to find out what the truth is uh which you know bill going through that kind of dilemma uh with uh, with the show what keeps you going well, yeah. first of all, the the books that I'm well, well, the well, the two books that I've done recently about um, the show, they're done. I mean, yeah. so the, the things that I'm doing now are like I'm, and I'm in, now I'm writing the uh, the manuscript for um, the Mickey Rooney biography we're doing. So I'm doing that. Uh, okay. A couple of months ago, um, Hearts of Darkness, which was about school shootings and it's a, a, a psychological study of, of, of what's behind all this, this epidemic that came out. What l- actually last month. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and then before that was another book on, on PTSD and, and, and traumatic brain injury in the military. And then before that was Dr. Feelgood. So those, so that's what I'm working on. So I'm not really, Writing books about UFOs, investigating cases. Well, you here's the thing. By the way, the Doctor Feelgood. By the way, that's the John F. Kennedy stuff I was alluding to earlier. That's, oh uh, yeah, yeah, but that was yeah. that was just uh, that was book that came out last year. The, right, that the, was recent. The, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but, stuff but before that, yeah, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I was... No, uh, go ahead. <laughs> and no, I just, I just that's know. why she <laughs> gets those emails. Don't be inhibited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Be- I can't bear the sound of my own voice interrupting and stuff. But, but here's the thing: it's half my show when we do feature theater. That's the part I don't get. How can I interrupt if it's half my show? And that's what I was. You know, that's what I was going to try to bring up to you guys. Um, Angel, by the way, one of the things that I've been promising, and I'm sorry, I'm taking over the five. Give me five seconds. Is Go that ahead. I'm going to try to Four. do um, some of the heavy lifting on. You know. The mechanics of the show, but no, no I more technical say, talk on air, though. No, no, no. This is not technical. The, this the is people. a little preface <laughs> to say: no matter what, I would like you to still be part of the show as a verbal person. You know what I mean? If it's all like all, all the, there's no dials to turn. How will I, how will you be part of the show? Well, we'll we'll figure that out when we get to that road. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, let's not talk about technical stuff. And no, no, it's not technical. Your voice in the show of... has become, I think, quite important. As you can see, as you can see, we're a smooth running team here. Indeed. Yeah. So ask Bill. Indeed, Bill. What do you think yeah. about what? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> see? Yeah. He's following right along. <laughs> okay, Charles Hall. Now, Charles Hall, um, according to. Um, one of the questions here, he has a millennial hospitality book series describing his encounters with a race of human-like extraterrestrials, the tall whites. Whenever we, and he was part of a, I believe, a, he was a military man, um, etc. What do you guys think about 
the, they're they're good aliens and they're space brothers. I, I, I you know there's absolutely no way to confirm objectively any of those stories. Anything. You, yeah. They're stories. I yep. mean, it that's really all they are. And I have heard these things, mm. and I've heard these stories. I mean, Charles Hall is one person. Now I remember the tall whites. Tall whites are supposed to be the helper ETs. So everybody that I've spoken to that has had contact, ongoing, benevolent contact with tall whites or Nordics. They're also called Nordics, I think, but, but the tall whites. Everybody who's had contact with them comes back with the same story. They are our progenitors. We share their DNA. They are here to help us. They are here to keep our planet alive. Well, here's, here's the thing. that um, The UFO field can feel like a dead end, which is why I'm, I keep harping on this uh, conference, this energy conference, because Dolan's talk, he's a UFO guy, Dolan's talk fit in like a glove to this whole new audience that I believe um, would love every show we all do. Because we almost always get to the same thing. So if you've got a nutty case in UFOs talking about tall whites, or you even start with the first one who was considered a nut, and that was Adamski. You know, right. they came from mm -hmm. Venus and stuff. There are some people who suggest in this new energy world that all, what, all the things we call UFOs are kind of like fantastical creations of this other mind, this other dimensional thing the this world community this this community we're not part of yet to Nancy, show us I, I, what's I think possible mo i think most of it is in all of our minds do you yeah i think that's mostly what it is and and and, like, uh, and going back to the tall whites i hope it's second. not i hope it's not that way mm -hmm. well listen going back to the tall whites here uh yeah. how much uh, how much of this could be just mythology that people hear about want to join a community feel like they're outsiders and they just they feel like they fit in in this community of you follow okay. okay they come yeah. up with other, these kind of stories and other, these kind of scenarios other worldly other worldly creatures have been right. a part of culture yeah. ever since human beings began to tell stories. Oh yeah, this is true. That is without that's in the Bible. I mean, that's one hundred percent accurate. So uh, therefore, but are they? How much they, of it is truth? Though, yeah. That's the thing, or how much of it is truth, and how okay. much of it is mythology that is created, uh, like a comic book, like a story. Just you know, well, a the stories, tale. the stories of little people, uh, have been around. I'm. I, Thousands of years, little yes. people, either Feyerias is what they were called, um, elves, but they've been around for thousands of years. Uh, George Washington, when George Washington had his two sightings, both of them in Valley Forge, one was this kind of Blakeian vision of, you know, the uh, mother, you know, this white angelic figure. Another was this green floating orb in the forest. And out of that orb, he called them green men. Green figures jumped out of that orb. So, I mean, and, and they were small. Yeah, and, and so there's Travis your little Walton? green men. Well, here's right. the thing. George Washington was also growing weed in the back of the White House and probably smoking a whole lot of pot. So how much of that yeah. is accurate? Yeah, okay, so uh, but what about Travis? Except this, took place, except this took place at Valley Forge. Yeah, so it not matter. They, he could have been traveling with the pot. You know, I'm just saying well, they were have, because it was their thing. Everybody, with him. You know? This is the well, first time in history it's been prohibited. But listen, guys, what about <laughs> um, Travis Walton? See, See, that right there, that's a case I believe. See, and not because I've interviewed Travis and uh, I got to talk to the guy, but because of the surrounding uh, circumstances in his case, uh, the fact that there was federal people involved looking for him, there was a manhunt uh, looking for him, they couldn't find this guy anywhere. Same thing with Whitley Strieber. I would hate to, I would hate to, uh, you know, like dis disbelieve Whitley Strieber and then the just... The main like, difference is, though, yeah, but yeah. the main difference is, though, Nancy, is Travis Walton, when he had his experience, he went back to work at his regular nine to five. He went back to doing what he was doing prior to this happening to him. He retired working at that same company. Yeah, yeah. he wrote a book. Yeah, yeah, he made a couple books on the book in the the eighties and the early nineties. They made a movie which it was pretty good, but it kind of sucks because they fictionalized uh, most of it. And even he says that he's not happy with the movie. Uh, but this is not a guy who uh, tried to create a cult 
around mm-hmm. you know what happened to him. True. And that happens a lot with a lot of the folks in ufology today. Uh, yeah. Whitley Strieber, I would hate to think that he is faking any of the stuff that he's that he's. Yeah. Writing, well, here's the thing. Out. He has. But he is a fiction writer, though. That's right. another thing. And he so. has. He like Linda Moulton Howe have a very tight grip on a a, a good good sized community that that you pay to join, right? Right. And, you know, and so they're very, they get very prickly if you get, you know, and that's, but with, when I, but I've talked to Whitley and, and I think, my goodness, um, I don't know. I think he's on the level. I really do. So, um, so do I. I mean, yeah. I, I do not doubt anything he said. I think. I mean, you could be a fiction writer his- and when you are a fiction writer, you occasionally will go into the zone Everybody has a calling, and when they when they're doing whatever it is that they're put here to do, they're in the zone. Yeah, but here's, so, the thing, Nancy, yeah. here's the thing, Nancy. He's, uh, we're talking about a, a person again who is a fiction writer. Yeah. Uh, no different than L. Ron Hubbard. Right. And he but, created but his Whitley own religion. But Whitley Strieber is not is not making a religion. He's basically he's charging for a website, but yeah. well, that's it. I mean, you I know, mean, he's telling a story, and he's yeah. and he's making money from from I guess his radio show. And his website. So this nothing is nothing wrong with that. I mean, nothing right. wrong for making money from your radio show. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's uh, but look, no. W- w- Whitley Strieber is one of the, the, the sm- to me anyway. Uh, his story, while it's it, you know it's a great book, and uh, you know the communion story, the movie was great with Christopher Walken, great movie. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know it's really a small sack of potatoes compared to everything else that's been going on in the world of ufology. Compared to like again the one armed bandit over in in Europe. Well, actually, uh, could... actually, um, we all came into ufology when it was at its di- it's at its dying end of ufology. When kind of is yeah yeah when the fifties were here, the fifties and the early sixties when people. Uh, old guys now who are still around, it was, I mean, I'm telling you, you could have a conference and you would make a fortune just because it was so popular. Um, and it get, became less and less popular as each of us entered the field, it was less and less popular. Um, but when Whitley did his thing, when he did communion, this was back when books were still really important, he and his wife, Anne, had such a deluge of mail that that's how they started this whole f- foundation or whatever, everything came from the fact well, it, that they it, had because it, it hit a nerve huh? it hit a nerve it hit a nerve with yeah, people that's who were interested it hit a nerve with everybody who was interested in the subject uh maybe some people that you know read the book and uh could maybe uh, relate to it because they were abducted and some of them might have actual genuine no, he was he's a he's a good storyteller and in fact he is it has such a ring of truth it's but so was stephen king an excellent storyteller yes you know and so uh you know that's but do, do I mean, we crucify him though because he was a fiction writer and say, well, because you wrote fiction, you could not have gone and experienced this yourself? But see, here's the thing: Bill can That's the Bill question, can write really. Bill can write books on all these other topics, but as long as they're still um, running UFO hunters, people are going to ask him questions. Right. And every time you turn around outside of the UFO field, as I said, we're doing this health book on this diet. I'm running into time and time again. Another person I was following for the diet is suddenly talking about seeing again the tall whites. In this case, that's why I thought it was weird that uh, it's a woman who's you know. So the so many weird fields are leading back to this. I don't think any of us can ever really get out. I haven't no, heard I don't much think of so the either. tall whites. I haven't really heard a, a whole lot of uh, me either uh, on the tall whites in you know in recent months. But uh, I'm gonna have to do a little more research on the tall whites. Uh, but you know, how much of it? I mean, how much do you guys follow like the new agey stuff, like the indigos and um, star I mean, seed, star child, and all that star stuff? Star children and indigos yeah. and and, yeah. and crystal children. Yeah, all that. I mean, these were uh, these were stories in the. Dating magazine. all the way back to the 80s, right? Yeah. Well, we had stories in the magazine about this, about indigos and star children. Um, what, what, well, here's what's ha- what has happened is that, um, and here's the thing you're going to find out if you haven't found out already. Sometimes the really nice people, the really easy to get along with people, the people who complete an article without a lot of you know pulling out their hair, um, are completing an article that's not really, you know what I'm saying. It's kind of a little flighty. So you put it in the magazine because you've got to fill the space. It's not an excuse. but so it's, it's a filler. filler. It's what we did. And so, yeah. yeah, we have had probably one story each, but then, see, and then you file it away. 
but here's the thing. Well, I don't think the two come together, but um, there seems to be definitive proof that lots of in famous inventions have been squashed, starting with Tesla. You know. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, so, Tes so there's Tesla something... was butchered by by the government. Te what happened with Tesla was laughable. No, but, but... Bill knows the actual story. No, about... I mean I know the story, but I mean, yeah. in fact, I interviewed. We had an interview with Tesla's granddaughter in the magazine years ago. She was um, beautiful. Yeah, she was beautiful. Um, but the real story is that he wasn't really butchered. Um, Tesla. Um, he died if he broke, was... though. Like, he was penniless then when he died. Well, he yeah. was when he died because yeah. what he'd done, it wasn't the government. What he'd done was that he was a, he was a multimillionaire. And then he made a discovery about the wireless transmission of energy and, uh, and radio. And he had gone to um, J.P. Morgan, um, who was his benefactor. He was in, his chief investor. And when he tried to explain to Morgan what a wonderful world free energy was, Morgan simply withdrew his money completely and said, how can I make money if energy is free? Well, Tesla kind of hung on, but when he died at the hotel, first of all, the stories about him were endless, but when he died at the hotel, he, he thought after all this in World War I that he would get this huge contract from the United States Navy because Tesla had invented the homing torpedo. He invented robots. I mean, if I can go on and on to the stuff he invented, hmm. but Thomas Edison was on the naval board and ah. rejected, rejected every one of Tesla's suggestions. Then at the start of World War II, here's a guy mm -hmm. scrambling for money. So at the start of World War II, devastated by the Depression, the start of World War II, Tesla was uh, trying to convince the United States government that, one, he was the real inventor of radio, not Marconi. The Supreme Court eventually granted the patent to Tesla, not Marconi. Mm -hmm. But Tesla was also very trying to convince the United States that he had invented anti-gravity, that he could make anti-gravity work. And um, when he died, the Office of Alien Properties, because Tesla was not an American citizen, the Office of, or maybe he was, but the Office of Alien Properties seized all the contents of his hotel room. After the war, the, um, the Yugoslavians, the new Yugos country of Yugoslavia, under Marshal Tito, wanted to create a Tesla museum. And we gave all of Tesla's papers from the Office of Alien Properties back to, the, uh, uh, back to Yugoslavia and the Tesla Museum, except for one set of documents. Yep. Those were Tesla's anti-gravity notes that went from the Office of Alien Properties via the FBI to General Nathan Twining at the Materiel Command at Wright Field. Hmm. And it was General Twining who was one of the first, besides um, General Ramey, to get involved with the Roswell crash case. Hmm. Wow. So hmm. this goes all the, back, all the way back to Tesla, though. The whole yeah. Mm -hmm. case. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Now, yeah, well, when is, you, yeah. Go, go back to my question though about the stars, star children, and indigos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how does that connect to a Tesla? A well, well, I don't, you know, it, it, see that the star children and the indigos and all that stuff, and um, those two things in particular, I think are really great gimmicks to get. That's people what I was going with. Feel <laughs> that's, good about that's themselves. why I brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I brought it up because I was, I was, uh, you know, going back to the the whole hoaxing. And then we just got sidetracked with. I mean, we've been hoaxed. It's fascinating in itself. Well, we've but, been hoaxed as a magazine. We've been hoaxed. We uh, there's a cover story we have with a with a with a woman who said she was abducted, and they took us out for a sky watch, and and in fact that's the one and only time in my life I ever really saw, maybe satellites. Who knows? There was a lot of pendulum going on, you know, pendulums all over car hoods, and they were trying to call things down. But but I think mostly. I've never seen ever any indication that any of that's true, ever. It's always well, Nancy, did you, yeah. the object. Did you see? Was it moving? And then it, did it make some kind of a weird um, 
movement in the sky and then shine a bunch the of them light. formed into a really good sized cross. Okay, and did, uh, did they shine any bright lights like just sporadically and then just stop? Just when the cross when the cross got made, it, it kind of sh- it kind of you know got very bright. It yeah, was so obvious satellite. that you say to yourself, but yeah. I think to myself, couldn't it be lasers somehow? Oh, well, you, well, maybe. I don't think so. Maybe. Somebody in a car with lasers that you don't even know is there, like parked down the mountain a bit? I don't think so. I mean, that was too high up for lasers. And even though lasers have a long beam, they have to hit something. They don't just play in the sky. You've yeah. got to have something that the lasers hit. To make um... see, here, here's the thing, because the government has gone to so much trouble to block this topic out of the media, to completely black it out. That's the biggest clue of all. I mean, if I... if there were if there if there were nothing, the media would be eating into this the way they eat into the superstructure of our underbridges of the country. You know, media media looks into everything, except this. Right, because the government has so effectively marginalized it since the nineteen, which means the it's not 1940s. in everybody's mind. I mean, forget. Well, exactly. it's not only that they've marginalized it; is it's also, I think, a lot of the disinformation stuff that's happened, a lot of the hoaxing is uh, it's done by the government itself. Yeah. Well, no, but the big no, no. The Corso big thing said the is, government doesn't have to do much. That there, there's so many people. Not anymore. Yeah, so many people yeah. are not just doing it themselves. But I think yeah. at right. first, a lot of a lot of it was uh, you know government mandated disinformation and hoaxing and stuff. And then of course people just uh, monkey see monkey do. You know they got on the bandwagon and people thought they, they saw that they can make some money off of this. And uh, now you have cults sprouting all over the place. Because look, ufology in a way it is a, it is a religion. Kind of is its own cult. In itself, with little sectors sort of, in it, sort of. I mean, sort but, of, right? It's, but it's it becoming. Be, it's becoming a religion, though, Nancy. It really well, how has. Many, in the last um, how 20, many years. move on meetings have you gone to, or uh, conferences have you gone to? How many times have you mixed in with the UFO people? Have not had a chance to go to a uh, MUFON uh, conference yet. I was uh, scheduled to go to uh, the UFO Info Weekend, which was going to take place a few years ago with Alan. Uh, here he was uh, supervising the whole thing, and it fell apart last minute. It was supposed to be at Cape Canaveral. They're going to do the uh, last launch of the uh, of wow. the uh, shuttle, and uh, they're ha- they're having a whole convention uh, surrounding that last launch. And unfortunately, it fell through. It didn't happen. But um, that was going to be my uh, first convention in well, the whole field of ufology, I which I am to... dying, I look, I'm dying to get into more of uh, going out there and seeing these people live and seeing and interacting yeah. with, with folks because it is a little bit different when you actually see somebody face to face. Exactly. And you can see them eye to eye and you, know, you can see if they're... And, and you know what? Them. Pretty quickly, everybody figures out who the real people are and who the frauds are and the real yeah. people are often swamped and they're exchanging notes, they're taking names, they're getting more information. This is a great way to trade information um, you know, the real people, how can having more information hurt you if you're the real thing? But, I, and, you know, and, and so the ones who are hiding stuff, I think, are the ones that actually have armed guards and lock people into the room. You know, you heard now, about much, that. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, Bill, real quick, going back to UFO Hunters, how much of the stuff you guys, uh, do you think that the stuff you guys covered on the show uh, was legit or had any legitimate uh, mm-hmm. backing? That's a good question. Well, everything was legitimate. It's, I mean, even the stuff that wasn't true was legitimate because that was the point of the show. We, right. See, everybody thinks the reason that UFO hunters, and, and I'll say this not for the sake of bragging, but just to uh, say this, there, there's 30 years and or more, 40 years of UFO shows going all the way back to the 1970s, 40 years. And of all those shows, UFO Hunters stands out in in a different way from them. And that is because in UFO Hunters, what we didn't do was try to prove that UFOs were real. I mean, it's hard to believe, but that's what we did not do. There was no attempt to prove it. There was no attempt to argue the case for um, UFOs, only to argue the case for evidence that couldn't be explained. See, we went in the opposite direction. This is why none of the shows, well, some shows will do this, but we went in the opposite direction from UFO shows. Most UFO shows... Yeah, but you didn't do... You made people mad because you didn't, like, definitively solve a problem like CSI. Right, you didn't definitively solve a problem. Mm -hmm. The whole point was to definitively solve what debunkers were saying 
okay, uh, the, the model for the show, at least to my mind, besides Sherlock Holmes, okay, that was my model for investigation, was uh, a study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. The, um, but the model for the show show was a show all the way back in the 1950s starring John Newland. It was called One mm. Step Beyond. Yeah. And in one Angel, step have you ever beyond- seen that one? No, I have not. I'm oh, going to on, you I'm gonna put that on my on, bucket list. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll find it on YouTube. It, Just for the in music. One, in One Step Beyond, mm. one, um, the, the point of the show was a paranormal show. It wasn't UFOs. It was paranormal. But they tried to go through every single conventional explanation for mm-hmm. what was happening in a paranormal case. And in the very end, the last of the conventional explanations fell apart. And yeah. they were left with the unsolvable. And that was the one step beyond. And all the stories were true. And so on UFO they Hunters. Said so, yeah. 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 And so on UFO Hunters, because I wrote a lot of them, one of the things that um, we were doing was that model of going through all the different scenarios for certain kinds of things. And the UFOs that were not real cases, like Maury Island. Like, um, and that was a mistake because that was the first show. But yeah, that at was that a point, you know, they they wanted to do this. Sh- they wanted to do the series historically, like starting with the earliest, epi- you know, sighting and move up. But that that they quit that right away. Yeah, but anyway, so so we did the Maury Island. Then this, then the next season, we did Aurora, Texas. The um, you know, the Aurora aircraft. Yeah, but you mystery. also uh, you brought new information to the Cash Landrum story. Right, you, that was brand I mean, new. You uncovered, yeah. you uncovered even the Aurora. Um, you you uncovered new stuff with the right. with the digging of the well because Pat. Yeah, That's exactly. Good. In the Aurora case, everybody claimed the case was a big fraud. Never happened. There was no well on the property. Right. There was no this. So we found the real guy, and we found his grandson. He allowed us to dig. We dug the well. So the well was real. At the bottom of the well was aluminum. The aluminum we found did come from before yeah. World War II. It was from the 1920s or 1930s. And we found the town historian in nearby Dublin <clears throat> who said that these, air, that these metal-clad balloons by sportsmen were coming down all over the place because their engines were giving out. Well, that's what happened at Aurora, Texas. A metal-clad balloon hit the rotating blades of the well pump because it was sucking water up of the well pump. It exploded, sending metal all over the place, but the water wasn't contaminated by it. The old judge had terrible, terrible gout, and his, his limbs were swollen up. That's why. And then the well oh. went dry. So the two things were completely different. The well dried up, so they closed the pipes, dug a new well. He had terrible gout from his elbows down to his hands, and so that was why he was swollen. It wasn't from the water. Hmm. Ouch. And, and who, was the, who was the military man who admitted, I think it was during the, the uh, Janet air, uh, airplane thing, he sort of admitted that something, well, he admitted right on camera, that was which case it was. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Well, Janet Airlines would have been in Nevada for Area 51. No, but you remember the guy you got oh, the you Bullhead were, Airport, the Bullhead he, Air, Bullhead yeah, City Airport so. in Arizona. Yeah. yeah, I mean the other thing was after the Needles incident in 2008. So we're there, we're in Needles, California. And the closest airport to Needles is Bullhead because it's right near the Four Corners, right in Nevada, Arizona. And what's Arizona. the Needles incident? Refresh our Well, memories. that's where this kind of artillery shell-shaped object did what some witnesses, there are two main witnesses, said was a controlled landing on the banks of the Colorado River. And then um, the whole place was flooded with federal um, personnel right after that. There were a lot of personnel. And the one thing we noticed was that at the Bullhead City Airport, Janet Airline planes were landing. Janet Airlines is the um, CIA-owned, the federal government-owned airline that transports people back and forth from McCarran Airport to Area 51. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Right? Okay, so we filmed those lines. Then, for Bullhead City... We filmed 
a Janet Airlines plane landing at the Bullhead City Airport after the Needles crash. And so the airport manager, who was a retired Marine, told us flat out that he never heard of Janet Airlines. They don't land at his airport. He would know if Janet Airlines landed in his airport. He would know if a jet that big would land at the airport. And sure enough, right, right. we had video of a jet landing at Bullhead City Airport. So we caught the guy in a falsehood about Janet Airlines. Basically, I think that show, the show, every case you did, many of the cases are real cases, and you move them forward just a notch. For example, that Japan Airlines thing, which the video, the, the visuals in UFO Hunters are amazing at how big a UFO was trailing Japan Airlines. Uh, they were flying, I think, over Antarctica. Basically, they were taking a shortcut, you know, well, it was, they they were were delivering the wine. Cir- no, they were taking the circle route over the northwest, over Alaska to go to Japan. It, it, it's the shortest route. It's the circle route. And that's when they picked up this object that was tailing them. Right. And remember, we only need one story to be true. And this the sort of story where all the witnesses are trained people and right. stuff's on radar, etc. Yeah. And multiple well, it, from, it's from like I said, Na- space. It's like I said, Nancy. It's just 1% of, the, of it is true. The whole thing is true. Right. And maybe that's and all you need is 1% of a motor. But by the by, the reason I keep bringing up alternate energy, all these speakers are saying that that's the reason it can't come out. And it has to come out almost like many, many holes in the dam or in the dike. Have to, it has to come up little by little because the energy companies, all the energy companies run the world, the pharmaceuticals. This stuff will, will hurt their business. Supposedly. Yeah, to what point, though? Because I mean, you would think they will adapt to the technology and they, they are. Will start making money. Yeah, they are with this. That's supposedly technology. they are. Yeah. 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 Let's go back to uh, to you know hoaxers and and ufology and um, you know not talking about James here yesterday you know, or anything like that or even that well, one well, 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 armed add, guy add from skin, and Switzerland. Add skinwalker. You know, you, skinwalker. And then let's talk about different uh, different aspects of ufology and hoaxing. Uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, for example, that's another one. Tell us, uh, Bill. Tell, can you tell us a little bit, or Nancy? Tell us about the Skinwalker Ranch for those who might not know much about what the Skinwalker Ranch is. Well, it's a real and, place. I th- I think the person who is probably you know like the real expert. Well, there's Colm Kelleher and there's George Knapp. They've both been there. They've both uh, uh, they wrote a book together about it. They both worked with, um, I think, Robert Bigelow on the acquisition right, of that right, ranch. Right. 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 And, 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 and there's a third one. Remember the one that you know about that's very private. What is that called? Well, there's one we covered on UFO Hunters that was in Arizona. And, and that um, one is, you, you know, um, that one is the real, see, that one seems to be the real thing, and it's very, very private. But people know about it. Oh, it's, oh, oh. Um, I know what you're talking. No, no, that uh, that's not in Arizona. That's in the Ozarks, and that one is Marley Woods. Okay. And the Skinwalker Ranch and the Gilliland Ranch and Marley Woods and if, and and places like that really do share this one aspect of there seems to be they seem to be like a curtain, and hmm. on the other side of the curtain is a really in fact. We're- Oh, there I did it again. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, let me see if I can get Bill and Nancy back on here. Me now. I'm here. Yeah, we we took a call there. Uh, Dan uh, Harmon called in. Sorry, Dan. I don't know what ha- why Skype is doing that, but when you take a call for some reason, it's doing that. Let me add him because he he definitely wants to get uh, something off his chest here. Uh, okay. But before I, I get him on the line, uh, Bill, finish your thought, and I'll get Dan on the line here. Well, no. All I'm saying is that in in these three places. They really do act like curtains between our dimension and somewhere else. And the physical trace evidence is enormous, mm-hmm. proving that these things are real. And the photographs <coughs> are enormous, are, are yeah. just incredible. So, Can you also call them sc- s- stargates? Well, people have talked about stargates. I keep thinking that they're kind of like curtains to another dimension. So call them stargates because that was the movie but on but they're but they're also curtains that are separating two kinds of dimensions and you don't want to go into their dimension they yeah, come who, into who ours is the, who's the guy from marley woods that you interviewed ted phillips 
Okay, we, we should have him on the show. Now, here's the thing, because he seems like completely legit. He was a skeptic when this all started, but so many of these stories remind me of the Amityville Horror. Somebody buys a property. They don't know what the heck they're going to do with it. So they make up a story that, you know, they're seeing stuff on their property, and suddenly another you know, property is a uh, tourist attraction. Well, right. right. That's what happened with Amityville. But Marlon my, Woods my is just question, the opposite. But hold on. My question is, though, Bill and Nancy, uh, with all these properties that are springing up, isn't it kind of um, convenient to have a little ranch or something like this where people could come out and you can make money off of it and you could set up maybe props or things to happen to have people believe they're seeing something, they're having a sighting? Well, I, I kind of wish you, Angel, if you have the time and energy, and, and we might try it ourselves. We were talking about it tonight. I think we should all go to this ranch. Oh, Sad- I'm, I'm totally down. Sadly, this, by the way. you know, you're going to, you could come back really like feeling like I was right. It's not. Or, or you could take a walk on the wild side and, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'll tell you what, look, I'll tell you what, Nancy, I'm actually very, very interested in checking out uh, James's ranch, uh, not because I'm a nasty debunker, as uh, some would call this, or call them, because uh, I'm really not, but I am a very curious person in ufology, and I want to know what's true and what's not true, and James seems like a very nice guy, we talked yeah. to him on, on the show yesterday, he seems like a very nice person. Well, see, he uh, has, he comes highly recommended, his, you know, you kind of does, judge people yeah. by their friends, and you judge them, thank you, by their enemies, I mean, I, I am proud of our enemies. And I'm prouder of the people we call friends. And, and, you know, an awful lot of people, that's why I was saying yesterday, although he's saying stuff that seems insane, um, yes. Yes. we don't know what he's gone through. <laughs> we, I have not True. had a near-death experience. And I, um, there was someone recently on another show I was listening to who talked about having it. Maybe it was, no, I think it might have been Rich. I can't remember who. But somebody Rich, just recently. Yeah, Rich had a near-death experience where he thinks he might have had one. Yeah. So it might have been his show that you were. Or no, was it last night? To? Was it James? Might have been James. I think well, it was James. James said he did have one. Yeah. Yes. And he thinks that was what kind of turned on the psychic abilities. And that's what Travis Walton said. He really believes that something they fixed him, perhaps. That yeah, but Travis, been... but Travis never claimed to have any psychic abilities. And oh, this is. Oh, no. 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 Well, it's, he, has, he never told me he claimed to have any psychic abilities. Here's, oh. here's what happened, okay? So we're talking to Travis, and he's on oh. the radio, right, because we're broadcasting live from the Bucks County um, MUFON convention, the one – or the Philadelphia convention. It's, 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 it's in Bucks County. And so we're talking, and um, John Ventry and I get this panel together with Pat Uskert and Travis Walton and uh, Antonio Paris and Anthony Sanchez, a few other people, and – one of the things we uh, and 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 Tom Carey. So as we're talking to Travis, Pat's interviewing Travis on the air, and Travis alludes to a certain ability that he has that he doesn't use. So on the air, we say, "Well, what's the ability?" He says, "Ah, I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to use it." I said, "Come on, you can't raise the issue and then not talk about it. Just to kind of give us a hint." He says, "Well, I can make things happen." What do you mean you can make things happen? Oh, I kind of can. He's like the Rain Man. I kind of can he makes think it rain. of. He said, "I kind of can think of what's in people's minds, hmm. and make things happen for them in their minds." And so he said, "But but it's so troubling to me that I don't do it." And I said, "Well, did you have this before your incident?" And he said, "No. It was only when I was deposited back." that I began to have this sensation about this ability that I had, and it scared me so much, I've stopped using it. I don't use it. That's interesting. I see. I haven't heard that story or that aspect of it. But he's never come out and and you know made claims publicly or anything like that that no. he has psychic no. abilities. No, in fact, he doesn't no. want to do that. He doesn't yeah, want to exactly. use it. Exactly. Right. That's but why nobody would know. You can and, hear. and real and real remote viewers say the same exact thing. It's not something they like to fool with. It's like it's like witchcraft or something. It's like there's a force there, and you have to respect the force. Respect the force. I like yeah. to that. Eh? Yeah. Uh, speaking of respect the force, let's get Dan on the line because I know he's been patiently waiting. Oh, to, nice. Uh, get his uh, question a in phone here call. with you. Let's uh, let's see if we can get him on the line without kicking us off. Uh, Dan, uh, come on, pick up the phone there, and you're on live on Skywatchers Radio. Dan, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you doing tonight? 
Hi, Dan. Doing fantastic. Uh, you got a question for Bill and Nancy? Well, I've got a yeah, basically, and actually, more of a cup of comments. Go I for caught, it. When I, earlier, when I when I was listening to it, and Nancy was saying that there's an awful lot of people who seem to hate her. Well, I don't particularly hate her. I just mm-hmm. get frustrated as heck with her. Ah. Uh, again, it goes back to you're stepping over some of the guests. Sometimes it's wonderful, but sometimes it's frustrating just from the sense that. Just about the time Bill may be getting ready to say something that I find exceedingly interesting. Do we do we have anything that is ufology based to yes, ask to them instead now, of you know just bashing poor Nancy? Over no, I'm not going to bash her beyond that. Okay, let's move no. past that point and let's get into some <laughs> UFO related. This is a UFO based show, not a bash Nancy Burns I'm show. Sorry, so. but I was just commenting on it. That's a, okay. Okay, go ahead. Now the other thing about a lot a lot of the people you do talk about in this not talk about that talk in this field do seem to have are from la la land and i have to agree with that and and one of the more okay. interesting ones is whitney streber which mm. i find very fascinating in that yeah. in that the last time i tried to listen to him i just found i couldn't listen to him because every 2 minutes he was hyping his books oh really yeah. Welcome yeah, to ufology, uh, Dan. That's what a lot of uh, folks no, he didn't. He do. didn't. He didn't <laughs> used to do that. No, I mean when I first started listening to him uh, back when he was on Art Bell and uh, early George Nori stuff. I mean he was he came across as you know a lot more credible. Now you know, and I think a lot of these people pro- is the problem is that they tell these stories that in and, and and they may or may not be true but if you tell them enough times the fiction and the reality tend to blend together yeah except so. here's the th- here's the thing and I let me interrupt you to kind of say this that's okay well, uh, yeah, I'm you know, I'm open and in fact you know what I know that you will, you're going to end up being one of one of my firmest mm. fans I I can mm. sense it I can feel it mm. um but anyway he's going to be leading the charge in the yeah, parade I mean for I, Nancy I, I, yes. I have uh, once you get to know me you'll 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 be you'll be okay <laughs> but here's the thing I spoke with Whitley at a party um, for a while, a long time. And when you talk to him and he's not, you know, he's not trying to sell his books, he is so shockingly smart and he has, he has had experiences and or he makes stuff up. I don't know. He is a writer. But if you look into the internet, if you go some, do some deep Googling, you will find out that he has a very, very, very strange background. And before he wrote even Wolfen, he wrote some horrible serial killer type books and stuff. Hmm. He well, has the hunger. No, one one is called Billy. Look it up. Oh right, right. I right. I'm right, and so and people who have really looked into this, people who are conspiracy theorists, believe that he was one of the kids who was used in experiments and stuff because his father was involved. You know how sometimes parents have to give their kids over. Uh, we have seen we have seen evidence of this. So he has a very interesting history. He, there's just more to him, I think, than uh, most most. Than, than, yeah. Haven't you found that, though, Nancy? That that seems to be like a parallel between a lot of folks like Whitley Strieber, uh, like the one on guy in Europe uh, who has uh, his whole mysterious <laughs> background. Also, uh, you know, it seems to be the common thing where Maybe. these folks who create these cults around their uh, their stories and they have books and movies and documentaries Maybe. and American uh, people who pimp their, uh, their stories out to the world. Uh, you know, these people all have this mysterious background where they've lived a hell of a life. And some of them are even musicians. And they failed at it, so then they get into the UFO field and they get a little fame and next thing you know they're pumping out music CDs and trying to... <laughs> Put well, their music out there, Dan. We're almost out of time here, yeah. and uh, you know I hate to cut cut you off there, but uh, any of the last questions or thoughts you want to leave uh, Bill um, and Nancy here with? My only concern, and I have, and I have, a, everybody there has expressed this concern about where this field is going. I mm. I've been following it for some years now, and I have to agree, it has sort of gotten mushy, and yeah. a lot of there's a lot of cruft in it that. Uh, it's hard to differentiate sometimes, and I wish we could just get back to to what, what finding out whether this is real or not. That's yeah. the issue. Well, I mean, well, here's here's the only thing that I can tell you. If you look at all the extrinsic evidence, it's absolutely real. It doesn't mean that every case is real. It just means that there is a phenomenon that's real, 
We don't know why the phenomenon is real or why we have an explanation for it. But when you see how various aspects of the field, like archaeology, like um, aspects of um, psychology, neuropsychology, um, and, and history, and, and the history of documents, when you see all this surrounding the testimony of a lot of people, then you have to say to yourself, well, obviously there is a phenomenon here that is real because there's evidence that attests to it. What the phenomenon right. is and why the phenomenon is, that's the mystery, but not that there is a phenomenon. Look, when you have President Harry Truman, President John F. Kennedy, President Ronald Reagan, President Jimmy Carter, President Jerry Ford, all saying the same thing about UFOs, they're real, they should be investigated. And even people like George Bush and Vice President Cheney, um, Vice President Cheney saying that if I received the UFO briefing, it would have been classified, so I can't talk about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Very subtle, when you by look the way. At that, yeah, yeah, when you look at that, or when you look at that, you know the phenomenon's real. The, the question is, who knows the why and the where right. for it? Yeah. That's all. Well, at this point, there really is no debate that there is a phenomenon going on, uh, even if it's all in our mind. Well, there is what do you, something what do you guys on. think all of John Lear, for example? Um, well, who wants to take that one first? Not me. See, <laughs> see, I think there might be some truth to what he's saying. I think yeah, so early I. in when he first started, I think he was telling some truths. Um, it just seems like it. And if you look at his old stuff, again, we, we covered him in UFO Magazine. I found him very compelling. N- not... Almost like a person who's telling the truth, knowing nobody's going to believe him. Yeah, right. Well, one of the, I'll just leave. I'll, I'll have one thing to say, and then I will leave you and enjoy and in saying I have enjoyed the tonight's show a great. Oh. Uh, I actually. God bless you. You're the one. I, <laughs> actually, uh, back in the mid '50s, around '52 or '53, uh, one night, my parents and my brother and I actually had an encounter outside of uh, Sherman, Texas. And mm-hmm. and that's where it sort of got me involved into thinking about all this stuff over the years. And for, for a good 50 years, I have not talked about it because there's just no nothing to be gained from it. And people look at you sort of pretty weird at times. Well, can, can you tell us what happened? Well, we were driving home from my uh, grand aunt, great aunt and uncle's house out of, outside of a little town called uh, Van Alstine, Texas. And we were just, it was probably about 8 or 9 o'clock because we had to be back into Sherman, Texas. That Guys, I, I, I hate to cut you off, but we're almost completely yeah. out of time. And uh, I don't know, this is, this is going to go for more than two or three no, minutes. No, no, it'll be finished. But my father pulled over to the side of the road and stopped on the country road and says, there's an airplane, airplane landing in that field over there, and we stopped. And, just started, and it was a UFO. And it came down about, looked huh. like 50 to 100 feet, and just stood there, changed colors a couple of times, and then sort of slowly rose and took off again. And there was no sound. It was just a light, period. Huh. A yeah. light. Dan, thank you for calling in. Guys, we have to cut him off. Uh, we got to go. We got to go. Do, that's why we do this business. That's why we do what we do. Got to go, guys. Listen, uh, speaking of John Lear, guess what? He's going to be on Dark Matter Radio Network next on Hyperspace. So everybody, please stay tuned Whoa. for John Lear on the Dark Matter Radio Network. For uh, my co-host, Alan, for Bill and Nancy Burns, great guest. Thank you uh, for being on the show tonight, by the way. Sure, our pleasure. Especially Thank you last for having night. us. For our overlord, Mr. Keith Rowland, I am Angel Espino. Mm-hmm. This is... Skywatchers Radio, and we will be back next week. Same Skywatcher channel, same Skywatcher time.
All right, everybody, we're back live on Skywatchers Radio right here on the Dark Matter Radio Network and, of course, PSN Radio. Folks that I'm talking about, the guests of the evening, it's like I, it, it feels like I've never talked to you in the, or haven't talked to you in a long, long time, but not really. Bill and Nancy Burns, how the heck are you? Welcome to Skywatchers Radio. Nancy's been here before. Bill, this, I think this is your first time yeah, yeah. on my it show, is. right? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And, and how shame like on it? me. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to all of you anyway. Oh, thank you. Okay, so it, during the break, uh, we were talking to Se- uh, to Alan, and right. Alan is a person who has been working 120-hour weeks. Okay, that's yes. a lot of work. Now, you are talking to four, now three other workaholics, okay? Right. Probably 90% of the audience listening, but... Uh, I'm a workaholic. Lord knows Angel is. He's working like 25 jobs. Yes. Um, Bill we is all, We all writing. struggle in this realm. Yeah, all exactly. So uh, I wanted to let the audience know that um, I wanted to quickly ask you a question before we lost you because there was talk during the break that you might want to take a break and go to sleep because you are, in fact, walking a walking zombie. On your mind, you, he, he, mind you, he's been drinking moonshine for. Well, but I got three today, say, and 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 I answered one of them, saying, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, so- I don't mean to be offensive, something like that. And then I answered the other one with something like, um, <laughs> I mean, I got I got really schlong today, three different ways, and it's like in one case, I told this one guy, you know, if I quit, then you'll be happy, but so far. You know, you're going to have to be unhappy. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me ask you the question, though. You got three pieces of hate mail, but were they all because of the same trigger point or yeah. different triggers? Yeah, the same. Okay, I got to ask, what did you What's do? What's the trigger point? What is yeah, what was the trigger? Did... Men's, the men folk. Oh, well, she's the great really? interrupter. That's, that's what it is, yeah. Nancy, really. You know, that, that, you know honestly... They shouldn't be knocking you. They really shouldn't because, you know, when someone has something really important to say, you could stop a midstream conversation and, you know, stream a thought because, you know, you just got to throw it out there. The same times when we have people that are on here that are telling us stuff and we're at the point where it's like, I'm sorry, I got to call Bat Squatch. I know, I know, I know. And- well, see, that that's the thing. We have... um Sometimes I like to let a person dig a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. I have yeah. a bunch of different ways. I women do that, by the way. Why do women <laughs> yeah. do that? Well, see, that's the thing. I think there's a couple things. That is so that wrong right. of you women. Okay, and for anybody <laughs> listening who agrees with these kinds of um, people who are good enough to write at least and go in the, and they go into the discus on, on futuretheater.com and they put this stuff. <clears throat> you got, okay, so what, it's a what good thing rabbis you don't want? excommunicate their flock. Um, you but know, Alan, did you complete high school? Um, yeah, kind of, sort of, yeah. Wow. Um, I I scored. I got kicked out. Um, you know, that wasn't the real trigger, as we're saying. When I got caught, uh, he pretty much called me out in the middle of class as a gigolo. Oh. At which point, at which point, I turned around and said to him, "But Rabbi, I didn't charge." And that's what that's really got kicked me kicked out. Well, are, how, how tall, <laughs> tall or short are you? Uh, depending on how well I slept, <laughs> uh, about five six, five seven. Okay, so you're a short guy. He's I'm short, altit- yeah. I'll admit I'm altitudinally challenged. But you're is. probably really cute, right? Um, <laughs> um I've uh. I've had a. F- I, I like the way Angel says I have a face for radio. Um, but no, I have a, um, yeah, I have a feeling you have hair. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm going to mute myself for a second. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> on. <laughs> He's he must be laughing his brains out right now. Um, actually, I do. This is all bald now. radio. Oh, yeah, this is all, radio all bald radio. <laughs> oh wow. Um, no, no, no. When when I was younger, yeah, I had a nice thick head of hair, and you know, I I was a, um, you know, I had my my share of you know le- you know girls and women in my life and uh, you, you know, did it your way I, I you know i didn't get in well i got into a lot of trouble because you know it's like i i was the cool jew um but um for folks who want to hear just bill there's a little series um 
about a year ago, thereabouts, a year and a half ago, where Bill did the show all by himself for three months. So dive Bill. in. Enjoy. By the way, what part of the country are you guys in? Oh, that's where, right where you are. And that was the other thing. When you first came on this morning, right. I thought perhaps you sounded like you had a cold. Um, my my daughter and her husband lived right in Jersey City, right next to where you are. Oh, it's okay. It's very urbanized now. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I used to live in... I used to live in New York about 20 years ago. I lived, I lived in the city and in Queens. Whereabouts? Um, I lived in uh, Midtown, and I lived in uh, Kew Garden Hills and Rigo Park when I was wow. younger. And wow. So what, did you go uh, to Paul Bowen High School? No, 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 no. I got kicked out of my high school. That's a whole other story. Wow. Um, okay. um, really? Yeah. He was a yeah. rebel without a clue. No, but okay, so you have to tell us why. How how do you get kicked out of high school? Yeah, I'm intrigued. Of in, course, we're, in we're here to interview Bill's too. I mean, we're, I can't we're, believe it. We're here to interview <laughs> Bill and Nancy, but I want to hear this story. So yeah, yeah that's actually. right. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's I should tell the, the story. And I should tell you, I'm from the other side of the lake in Forest Hills. So yeah, I I sort of got caught sleeping with the rabbi's daughter. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was knowing wow. you. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How old was this girl? She, the <laughs> the right age for me at the time. Okay. Was okay. it true love? Good answer. Um, you know, yeah, but you know the joke: falling out of love is just as easy as falling in love. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I, that's romantic, though. The last five hours. Yeah, go I ahead, can, you can no, tell I, the difference. No, I haven't. No, no I haven't. you can tell the difference. Not this um, time, no. Well, you know, Nancy, what do you want to ask Alan over here? Yeah, go well, ahead and ask. Well, <clears throat> I wanted to, since Alan is the second in command here um, on the show, and okay. since Alan has to sometimes. Well, te- no, hold on. Technically, 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 he's the third in command. See, our overlord, Keith Rowland. Is the yes, first in yeah, command. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody. I okay, would. I would Keith be second, a, and okay, then he'll I'm be third. Getting, nah, Keith is a figment. I'm beginning to yeah. think Keith doesn't no. exist. See, no, he yeah. does. Like, he does right, exist. Right now, Keith is holding up cue cards, saying, "I exist." You can't <laughs> see it. He doesn't talk. He just holds up cue cards. Right in your in your in your mind. <clears throat> <laughs> so I there's want a lot, to ask Nancy. If, there's a lot going on in that mind of his. You don't want to even well, start with that. <laughs> It, I wanted it, to, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, Alan, have sure. you gotten a consistent stream of hate mail since you started you the know, radio? You know, I don't know because Angel doesn't let me read the email, so I don't know if I've gotten consistent hate mail. Have I gotten consistent hate mail, Angel? Well, let's just say I didn't want to bruise your uh, fragile ego. Yeah. Really. No, actually, no. Come we, on, come that on. I've known. Here's the thing: we don't really give our emails out a lot. We give uh, the, the Facebook page out. Everybody knows the Skywatchers uh, Radio dot com page. And maybe I'm a and little how too. To find maybe us, my but. my borders are a little too impervious or pervy, per, per, uh, what, per, what's the All they have that's to that's do is permeable, stuff permeable. Permeable. There you go. Permeable, yeah. that's it. Or Able. porous. My porous are porous. Things leak right in and out. It's terrible. It could or be pervious. that. You could say pervious, too. 